Hi there. Um, this is a video series about how to use a Dobsonian mount telescope. And the main reason I'm making this video is for my nieces and nephews. I just bought them both Dobsonian mount telescopes for Christmas. And so I just wanted to make a little series that would show you how to use the telescope, what the telescope's all about, and so on. And so in this first video, I just want to talk about some basics about a telescope. So the first thing is, you know, what exactly is a telescope? And basically, you can view a telescope as a big light bucket. You know, with our own eyes, we have our pupil, and that's where the, the light comes in. And they're only about 1.5 millimeters in diameter. They get up to about 8 millimeters in diameter when your pupils are dilated in, in the dark. And that's really interesting because it means that when it's dark outside, you need more light to be able to see things. And that's the same idea with a telescope. You know, space is very dark. And so the bigger disk of light that you can capture with the telescope, the more you'll be able to see. And so right now, if you go out and look up in the sky on a clear night, you'll be able to see quite a few stars. But there's so much out there that's hidden from you, and there's so much detail that you can't see. So, now the type of telescope that I have, and also I purchased, is a Dobsonian Mount Refractor Telescope. These are kind of new school telescopes. So the old school telescope, which you might see Captain Jack Sparrow using on, on his pirate ship, is called a refractor telescope. And a refractor telescope uses lenses. And these lenses are what magnify, capture the light and magnify it, and so that you can see and, and pinpoint it down into your eye. And these refractor telescopes, they, they served um, everyone well for a long time. In fact, Galileo Galilei, he was the first one to see the moons about Jupiter. He was also one of the first to prove that the Earth was not the center of the solar system, that the center was the Sun, and that the planets, including the Earth, revolve around the Sun. But there were some problems with his telescope. The refractor telescope, you can imagine, it's light going through a piece of glass. And if you've ever seen a prism, and you put light through a prism, you can see that it separates the light out into different spectrum. And so when you look through a telescope that's a refractor telescope, especially an older one that hasn't been corrected modernly, then all the different wavelengths of light are going to focus in a different point. So you never get to see the full spectrum of light focused into a, a simple point. So the great um, scientist and mathematician, Sir Isaac Newton, he was trying to come up with a fix for this. And so he invented what we call a reflector telescope. And a reflector telescope basically uses a couple mirrors. And I don't know if you can see, in the bottom here there's a mirror, and in the top here there's another mirror. And what this allowed Newton to do was he was able to focus all the light in one point. So every spectrum, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet, in one point. And he no longer had the problem of the various spectrums of light focusing in different places. And so with that telescope, Newton was able to discover a lot of great, great things. And telescopes were also able to get bigger. The problem also with refractor telescopes is the lenses are very, very expensive. And so if you make a telescope with mirrors, you just need a big thick piece of glass and you um, make a concave parabola into the surface of the glass and you need just a surface coating to make the mirror. And so that allowed us to make telescopes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And in fact, even the Hubble telescope is a refractor telescope. It has a big mirror in it. Now there are various types of refractor telescopes. There's some that the light goes all the way down to the end and comes right back up to the front. And then there's other ones that are a little bit more sophisticated and they use um, a mirror in the bottom with a hole in it, another mirror in the top, and it shoots the light down to the base mirror, back up to the front mirror, and then back out through the hole in the mirror in the bottom so you can look from the back of the telescope. But those are a little bit more expensive. And so, one of the best bang for your box in telescopes these days is a ref reflector telescope like this one. And this one happens to be a Dobsonian mount telescope, and it was invented by jo John Dobson back in the 60s, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But let's start out by talking about the parts of the, of the telescope. The first main part is the optical tube. And uh, this is just the basic structure of the telescope. Everything is mounted on it or inside it. And then the next part that we want to talk about is the primary mirror. And the primary mirror is that mirror at the very bottom of the telescope. And that's where all the light is coming into the telescope and being gathered together. And then it's focused back up onto the secondary mirror. 
and you can't really see it, but there's a mirror here that's at a 45 degree angle. So the light is going down to the bottom, then coming back up, hitting this 45 degree mirror, and then it's shooting out to the eyepiece. The eyepiece is what you actually look at, uh, or where you actually look when you're looking at the stars. And the eyepiece is actually a series of lenses. So once again, we're putting the light through glass lenses here. And basically, it works like a magnifying glass. So the light comes up to um, a, a point here below the, the, the lens, and then the eyepiece, it expands it back out. So it's basically a magnifying glass looking at the little point of light that the telescope has gathered. Now the next part of the telescope that you need to know about is the focuser. And that's this part right here. And that's how you bring in the focus, the, whatever you're looking at. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then the next part that we can talk about is the finder scope. So this is like a little mini telescope. And basically what it does is it allows you to look at a much wider view of the, the sky or whatever you're looking at. And you can um, figure out where you want to look through this. And then once you've gotten it aligned, the telescope aligned with this, then you can go and look through your eyepiece and actually see um, in much higher resolution, much higher detail, what you want to look at. Now the last part of the telescope is the base. And I'll talk a little bit more about the base in a future video. Now let's talk a little bit about what you can see with the telescope. So there are many things to see on Earth, but what we're primarily concerned with is the sky. And so, of course, you can see the moon. It's amazing the detail you can see with the moon. Beyond that, you can see planets, which are some of my favorite. The main planets that I look at are Jupiter and Saturn. And it's amazing. You see the, the four moons around Jupiter. You can see the rings around Saturn. With a telescope like this, you can even see the moons around Saturn. And then beyond that, of course, you can look at stars. And individual stars, they're kind of interesting, but it's, um, there are other things like binary systems, binary stars, where they actually have two stars circling around each other. And you can, with this size telescope, you can actually see the two individual stars that are circling around each other. Many of the stars that you look up and see in the sky are actually binary systems. And then beyond binary systems, you can see star clusters. There are open clusters and there are nebulous clusters. And the open clusters are clusters where um, all the gas that was up there where the stars were formed has either been used up in the formation of stars, basically the stars ate, ate up all the gas, or it's been you know, blown off, moved on. And then you have nebulous star clusters, which they still are shrouded in, in gas. And so sometimes you can't see the stars so clearly. But those are kind of the star factories. So uh, they're actually baby stars that are gathering up the gases and they're about to be formed or forming. Sometimes you can even look and see um, well, you can't, probably can't see it in this telescope, but in a telescope like Hubble Telescope, you can even see um, solar systems starting to form around baby stars. And then, of course, you can look at, look at nebulas, which often are, um, also have stars in them. Uh, there's a famous horsehead nebula that's fun to look at. Uh, I believe it's in the Orion constellation. Another thing that you can look at through your telescope is you can actually see other galaxies. I've never seen a galaxy. I haven't um, gotten the chance to figure out where one is. But up in the northern hemisphere, where you all are, you'll actually be able to see the Andromeda galaxy. And you'll actually see the same sort of spiral shape, just like the Milky Way. And one day I really hope to get to see that. So there you have it. That's the basic introduction to the telescope. And in the next video, I'll go on and tell you more detail about each of the parts of the telescope.